Okay. Hey guys, again, I said I might do another video. I decided to do it while I was still in here. Alright, this one is called Barnyard Birds, There's More to Life Than Chickens. Okay. Chickens are unarguably the gateway to farm life. If you've dipped your toes in the small farm homestead or hobby farm lifestyle, I'm sure you've read all about keeping chickens. But do you know about the other kinds of barnyard birds? Right now, I have ducks, geese, turkeys, and guinea fowl all living together with the chickens. And yes, we will. Where do you get them? Tractor supply or the equivalent local bird vendor usually has ducks in the standard broad-breasted white turkeys. I've never seen geese or guinea hens there. They do actually carry them. Um, you just have to catch it at the right time. You can also leave your name and phone number and have them call you when they get them in. You can order them online like chicks or find them from someone local. We do have someone local that I can get all kinds of that stuff from. So, Hatchery birds should be certified disease-free and healthy. These guys talk about cackle hatchery. They are kind of expensive. I was going to order from them, but I just did not like the idea of chicks being mailed. Just... This is, I love cackle hatchery. I've got a batch of ducklings and guineas coming from them this June. If you decide to buy birds from someone locally, make sure you keep them quarantined for six weeks. It works out pretty well for babies. They usually stay inside that long. But it can, be tri but it can get tricky with older birds. This is, I'm a huge heritage life livestock fan. If you're looking for birds with a cool history, the American Livestock Conservancy is a great place to start. They have lots of information on heritage breeds of ducks, turkeys, and geese. Keeping ducks. After chickens, I think ducks are the most popular birds. Right now, I have a ragtag bunch of ducks that I got in a trade for a bunch of unwanted roosters. I have a Rowan, Oreo, and an Akana, the sole survivor from the last year's ill-fated batch of ten. Six were killed as ducklings by rats in the brooder. Two were taken out by a bobcat, and one was hit by a car. And two brown ducks that may be a buff Orpington and a khaki camp bell that I'm not 100% sure. In the past, I've had Muscovy ducks, and I really miss them. They're also much harder to find than standard ducks. They're much quieter because they don't quack. They hiss. Never heard a duck hiss, but that's interesting. The ducks are my youngest daughter's favorite barnyard animals, but they also have a job. Remember, I'm reading this off from Pinterest. Just reading it. I'm sharing it. I'm not uh, claiming it is mine because it's not. I'm just reading it. The alpacas and I need them for snail control. I'm not willing to use pesticides in the field, so ducks are my last hope. If you're wondering why my alpacas need pet ducks, the snails carry a parasite. The meningeal worm is a white-tailed deer parasite that can kill alpacas. We had not one or two, but three cases in my very small herd of four alpacas. That's a very good reason to want the snails gone. No, we're not going to do alpacas, but I don't like snails either. Okay. Duck care. Ducks are not hard to raise. You don't need a pond or a lake, but they do require a bowl of water deep enough to dip their faces and keep their nostrils clean. I keep a large kiddie pool, K-I-D-D-I-E, in my backyard that I dump and refill a few times a week during the summer. Ducks and geese are much messier than chickens. Yes, they are. I know that after even just having two little ducks. In the winter, I refill my large rubber bowls a few times a day. No matter how cold it is, you'll find a duck standing in one. Makes me cringe every time. The messy nature of ducks always goes back to their love of water. Along with making a huge mess in their water bowls, they have wet poops. The ducks and geese are the main reason I never keep water in my coop. It's either outside or out in the main area of the barn. I use the deep litter method in my coop, and I want to keep things as dry as possible. I will more than likely do the deep litter method in all of the coops. Because from what I've researched, it seems to be the best. So, Most ducks don't roost. Muscovy ducks are the exception. 
Mine used to hang out on the roof just for fun. I like to keep a very deep litter during the winter to help keep the ducky friends warm on the ground. They'll also lay their eggs on the ground. Out of all the birds I have, the ducks are most likely to lay an egg anywhere. Out on the lawn, on the deck, occasionally in the coop. Now that I'm home all the time, I've been opening up the coop a little later to try to get them to lay their eggs where I can find them. In the brooder. Ducklings are a nightmare in the house. They are messy and smelly, and you'll be counting down the days until you can kick them out. Never ever feed ducklings medicated chick starter. They will die. I feed mine unmedicated game bird starter. Get the highest protein you can find. 28% if they have it. You can also supplement with brewer's yeast for niacin. Okay. I will have to look into the feeds, but again, as I was saying, you've got to be careful because you do not want to feed your homestead farm birds chemicals. You just you don't want to do it. All right, different types of ducks. Like with the chickens, you can get ducks for meat or eggs, and like with the chickens, there are ducks that do both moderately well. The most common meat ducks are the the white pekin, P-E-K-I-N, Muscovy, very different flavor, and Rowan, R-O-U-E-N, will also give you a large bird for the table. Do you know that there are duck breeds that will lay more eggs than an average chicken? The khaki campbell is a slight-bodied tan duck that can lay 340 eggs a year. To be fair, that's an exception, and you'll be more likely to get around 200. That puts them about even with my Wyandotte hens. And I will be looking into getting more uh, golden lace Wyandots. Along with probably the silver laced and the blue laced, because they're just really beautiful chickens. If you're looking for hilarious ducks, you can't go wrong with Indian runners. The best description I can come up with for Indian runners is a bowling pin with anxiety. Interesting. They are very upright when they walk, and they're amazing and hilarious. Okay, keeping guinea fowl or guinea hens. Guinea hens are loud, louder than geese. They love to roam. And if you guys, if any of you have never seen a guinea hen, this is what they look like. And I could show the picture. That's what they look like. And we've had two. I had two French guineas. I have two right now, and their favorite hobby is getting separated on either side of the house. One will yell through the front door, and the other will yell through the back door. Good times. While the chickens are generally happy to hang out at home, guinea hens are always on the go, which is both helpful and annoying. The biggest pro for guinea fowl is that they, they are tick-eating machines. I've had zero ticks on me, my kids, or my dog since we got them. That is going to be a great, great thing on the property. And one of the reasons why I will be getting guineas. On the, on the not-so-bright side, they look like evil clowns. Another on the cons list, guinea hens can be bullies. I have two of them right now, and they bully my turkeys. Guineas are about the size of a large chicken, and they terrorize the tom turkeys. Now, if you raise the baby guineas with the turkeys and the hens and the ducklings and the goslings, they will not do that because they will have grown up together. So They're also pretty crazy. Once I saw the group chase off a fox, I don't think the fox was expecting a flock of evil ticked off, a flock of ticked off evil clowns to jump him that day. And they lay triangular eggs. It sounds odd, but if you see them, that description makes sense. Mine have always hidden their nests. One, one I found in the garden and a few others out in the tall weeds to the back field. I've never had luck letting them sit and hatch. Guinea heads in the brooder. Baby guinea fowl are called keats, and they're tiny. They have a well-earned reputation for being fragile, at least for the first two weeks. Guinea fowl are from Africa. They even make an appearance in Wild Kratts, Season 3, Episode 6. That, this was Mary's favorite show for a long time, and we've seen every episode 150 times. Remember, I'm just reading this. And they are made for hot, dry weather. Even damp grass can kill a small keat. I'm not a big fan of making more work for myself, but when I have guinea keats, I keep them separated from the chicks until they're a few weeks old and more sturdy. 
Ordering kates can be a real pain in the butt, too. A lot of hatcheries won't ship them with other birds. Again, fragile. So you need to get 15 plus at one time. Put marbles in their water to keep them from soaking or even drowning themselves. The marble trick also comes up a lot with turkeys. Speaking of, keeping turkeys. I have raised both royal palm and bourbon red turkeys. All the BRs went in the freezer along with most of the RPs. They are, they are the least useful birds I have, I have, but they are also my favorite and my oldest daughter's favorite. My youngest is a duck fan. Again, I'm reading this. I had a replenishing flock for a few years until a huge storm and a pack of coyotes collided and took me down to Gobbles and Henrietta. They did an okay job hatching and raising poults, but I had better luck hatching the eggs myself in an incubator. Not sure what we're going to do about that. Um, I've been thinking on that one, and I'll let you guys know when we get there. We lost Gobbles in 2017 and started again with a new batch of poults in 2019. I ended up with three toms and two hens. I'm almost constantly posting videos of them on Instagram. They are my very obnoxious happy place. In the brooder. Turkey poults have a reputation for being dumb. I don't see that, but some people recommend you put marbles in the water so they don't drown. I have had a turkey poult drown. And that is... Oh, I don't know if you can see it. It is... I still got a reflection going. All right, you can't see that one. It's too late, sir. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I accidentally uh, stopped the video. Right, I'll just have my daughter splice it together. So, All right. Picking up where I left off. I've raised them with other turkeys and with chicks. Poults are a bit larger. They have longer legs, and they have a little pimple on the top of their beaks. I don't remember seeing that, but I wasn't really looking for it either. You can usually find something called Game Bird Starter, which is an unmedicated and has more protein than Chick Starter. Again, be careful of your store-bought feeds. Do your research, read your ingredients, do all the checking. I know I'm going to. Adult turkeys. Adult turkeys get much bigger than chickens. They can be intimidating if you're used to small six-pound birds. Even my royal palms are pretty big compared to larger chickens, and they're a small turkey breed. Turkey hens are fairly calm. I love the sounds they make, too. It's a very soft, throaty sound. They lay large, slightly pointed, speckled eggs. Tom turkeys are another story. They can get aggressive. Gobbles hated my ex-husband. He would jump at him any chance he had. He would even go after me if I was dressed like my ex in similar boots and jeans. Gobbles used to court me. I think he saw me as a potential mate and Mike was his competi competition. I also watched him seduce a garbage can for two hours via game camera, so not the brightest bulb in the bunch. After Henrietta disappeared, nesting in the woods isn't a great hobby. Gobbles lived out the rest of his life harassing my ex-husband in wildlife and hanging with the guinea hens. We have a lot of wild turkeys that cross through the field behind our property. And we, there actually is a lot of wild turkeys around here, so. One day I heard a huge commotion, and when I looked out the window, I saw Gobbles had called in a big wild tom. That was pretty cool. But the amazing part was watching his guinea buddies run up out of nowhere. They yelled and attacked the poor wild turkey and chased him past the fence line. You can have a parasite... Parasite problems keeping chickens and turkeys together. It's called blackhead, and I've never had to deal with it. <sighs> Talking to other turkey raisers, it seems to be something you hear about a lot more than it seems to actually be a problem. If you plan to keep a mixed flock, you should look into blackhead in your area by talking to your local agricultural extension. Keeping geese. I've said quite a bit about my geese already in a very snarky post where I question whether or not geese are evil. Much like ducks, they're very messy. I'd honestly say even messier. Geese are giant messy ducks with anger problems. The goslings are cute as hell. And they are awfully, they're awful to keep in the house. I wouldn't re recommend it past a few weeks. I moved mine into an outdoor coop with a heat bulb because I couldn't handle the stink. 
They will tip the water no matter how hard you try to avoid it. They're loud, can be aggressive, especially in the spring, and leave giant wet poops all over the place. Final thoughts on barnyard birds. I think chickens are the easiest out of all of them, not that they aren't without their own issues. A flock of hens is nothing compared to the rest of this bunch. What kind of barnyard birds do you keep? Have you ever tried one to find out it wasn't for you? And go ahead and answer that question. Have you ever tried a certain type of bird on your homestead only to find out it wasn't something you wanted to raise? So, just out of curiosity, and hopefully you guys will answer. And I'm going to have to get off from here. Chloe's going to have to splice this together with the rest of it. It wasn't, there wasn't too much left, but. I'll get this video uploaded tonight, and I'm going to go ahead and upload the other one, like, right now. So, I will see you guys on the next video, which will more than likely be tomorrow. Might do one tonight. I don't know. It just depends on uh, how things go. My daughter and I are going to be doing a cake today, so. Well, after I get home. <sighs> Sorry, I only work two to five tonight, so. But anyway, I will get this other video uploaded, and I will get this one uploaded later, because Chloe's going to have to spice it together for me. So, splice it together, not spice it together. I'm tired, could you tell? Alright, so, go ahead and answer that question in the comments today of, have you ever had a bird on your homestead that you didn't know, weren't real sure of, and didn't really like? So, you decided not to have it, or not to get any more, just let me know. So, I will talk to you guys later, and see you on the next video. Bye, guys.